The only thing I've gotten a nibble on is this. I'll show you. I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's Chris Thorne. And this is the 30 Days Survival Challenge, Texas. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch and cook it. <sighs> Good morning. So the Wooded Beardsman was telling me last month when I was in Canada with him that uh, if you want to survive on just meat, you need to eat 80% of your calories in just fat. I haven't confirmed the study, but I think that raccoon is about doing that, considering how fatty those little stinkers are. But thank God for that, because it's kept me alive. I want something different, though. We're in a new location, and we got nine days left. This is day 21. So, let's see what we can get out there and make happen. I hear squirrels in the trees. There's supposed to be boar here. There's new river with new fish, new adventures to be had. Time to get up. Time to get going. All right, time to wake up, honey. You ready to go find some turkeys? Let's go find us some turkeys. All right, you got your Leave you on so you're good to go. Or a squirrel. I need to take a squirrel with you. Yeah. Love that sound. Best sound in the world. <laughs> well, outside of the sound of my slingshot. That's pretty good sound too. And then we gotta go down to the river, get some water, get our, get our uh, water filtration system set back up. Beauty is, I think this is a moving river. So it should be a lot cleaner to start with. And get some coffee and get the stew pot filled back up so we get some broth going. Much to do, much to do. Explore this new location, yeehaw. Those of you just tuning in, we're at our new location, like I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, and it is not as rural, so you probably will hear car sounds and things. We are still on a bunch of acres um, out here in Texas wild, as it were, having a wild time, 30 day survival challenge. So if you haven't watched the videos before this, make sure you go back, check out the playlist that is linked below in the description for my channel and also Drop Forge Survival Chris's channel. You can watch each of our days as they proceeded out here and the days to come. We've been uh, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. And uh, I'm really excited about this new location. I think I already said that a couple times. Coming up on the river here, let's see what we got for our new river and resources. Oh yeah, look at that. How do I get down in there? That looks beautiful. Oh man, look at this river. It's almost crystal clear. Oh. What's up, bud? Hey. Uh, got the water? Got the water. Woohoo! I, I got the fire. I even got two lines in the water to see if we can't catch some minnows to catch us some bigger fish. I gotta get back down there. It looks like a beautiful fishing, fish, fishing. Beautiful fishing situation. Right? Beautiful fishing situation. Yeah, the water should be clear with all the rain and flooding they've been oh, getting all this month. Beautiful. Perfectly clear. Where are we hanging this thing anyway? Oh, uh, we should have some spots around here or a branch somewhere. This thing's kind of neat. It's got the, uh, whoop, you gotta turn it off. <laughs> Plug in your hose, and then your hose, you got your filter you can put on the other end of it. So you can put clean drinking water right out of it. But I like the fact of just being able to pull this off, keep your filter in here for now, and since we're making a stew and we're gonna boil it, and the water's fairly clean, it doesn't matter, you don't need to. 
And I kind of like the way this GoFlow bag works too because you got this layer at the bottom here where you don't draw your water off of so that sediment can settle. You take from above that, your dirty water ends up, dirty stuff ends up at the bottom. And you can get fairly clean water. Oh, if I can just get it here. Hey, whoa, high flow. There we go. Right into our new box. Oh! It's kind of finicky. Reminds me of that scene in Money Pit. There we go. Good bit of flavor. It just. Mm. Oh wow, it's just falling off now. It was stewed for a day and a half, two days. Super, 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 super happy with this meal. <sighs> Nothing says breakfast like a delicious cup of raccoon soup. Except for maybe some bacon and eggs. Ooh. I shouldn't have done that to myself. Bacon and eggs. Actually, that doesn't even sound nearly as appealing to me right now as just like broccoli and like cauliflower and vegetables. Oh, vegetables. Oh, raccoon soup. I wish you were some vegetables. Dear Diary, I think I finally understand why Floridians put on winter jackets and scarves when it's 50 degrees outside, and yet while I'm at home in Maine, and it warms up above 50 degrees, I start taking off clothes. It's just so darn hot in the lower states more often than not that when it does go below 50, your body's like, No! 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 And while at home in Maine and the temperature goes above 50 during the winter time, your body's all, Finally, one worm. Not a lot of good worms here. An awful lot of digging for one worm. Be happy with a couple grubs. Anything. Come on, catch me a fish. Stays there. Yeah, that'll be better. Doesn't snag on stuff that way. Aha, getting smarter and more clever every day. You know? <laughs> that was uh, one of my biggest problems. See, going through this stuff like this, I duck down and that arrow's sticking up at the top of my pack usually. Now it's on the side of my rifle and uh, I am good to go without snagging on stuff. That's and you just thank God for all the small little blessings of creativity when you come up with them. It's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna get some of these to bring with us too. That Chris has been stashed here at his new bug out location. Put them to work. 
just in case he tumbles, I can have it on camera. This is not the easiest hill to get down. No, not, not quite. We gotta dig some steps. Yeah. Beautiful location though, like I showed you earlier. Beautiful spot. I'm gonna check my little bait lines over here. Oh, lot of nothing on that one. And a whole lot of nothing on that one. There's a good spot down there if you're crazy enough to go swimming. Well, I was gonna go over there and then hike down to it. Yeah, that looks like a good spot because it looks like it's another runoff. Let's see what we got here. A little bobber. A little worm action. All that digging and I got like two good worms. So hopefully they work. I got a lot of little ones. A lot of little ones. Not to say that they won't catch something, but if I can catch a fish on one worm, I can put some gills on the hooks and probably catch a second fish. Trying to figure out where you are and go where you're not. I'm everywhere. Huh? I'm every woman. And yeah, that's where they were jumping right over there. We gotta go up and then like work our way down or something. There we go. I made a mess. I'll fix that. There. So I'd be careful I'll leave You just gotta make it through the first part and the rest of it's a cakewalk. Yeah, that's what you said. If you wear pants. Oh, neat. There's like a little cave under there. There we go. That's where I want to be. Right over there. And so the fish were jumping right over here. So if I can get there, cast out there, boom. <sighs> Made it. Bless this little worm, and he do his thing, take a fish. Well, no luck so far. The only thing I've gotten a nibble on is this. I'll show you. I busted out the Grim cards and I put a swivel on there and then put one of these Grim card hooks and a little Grim card spoon. I'll show you the action. This thing is crazy the way it spins in the water. And it comes off of one of these Grim cards like this. I took that off the fishing card and it's got the spoon spoon, and a hook. There's another spoon and smaller hooks. And this is even a casting card so you can cast off of it. And I have my own custom Grim card coming with some of these same items and some of the things I've come up with myself. Right here you can see it should be here like tomorrow or the next day by drone and we can give that a try too. And so the only thing I've gotten a little bit of a nibble on and had a couple hits, like two hits on was this, and I can't seem to get anything else to even hit. So I'm gonna move down the river, try one or two more spots, see if I get lucky. Maybe this hole is just stagnant right now for some reason, but it's feeling like they're not chowing down right now. Say that again? Oh, I was like, this was a little bit thinner. I could just fit right through. Really? Yeah. And that sounds like a challenge. Yeah, you were doing it. Let's, let's see what will 10 more days do for you. 
I don't you, know. I might be able to do it. You I might have be a luscious booty for a guy, though. Although it's only nine more days now we're down to. Let me see. Let's see how thin the fowler is. Oh, yeah. Oh! <laughs> I can go right through. Yeah, he had a suck. He had to go over the butt mode, though. No, no, I don't think my butt can go through. All right, I have to either go low and, and scooch through or bring the butt up. Wow, this is neat. Oh, this whole area is gorgeous. It's like the, we just climbed through some pathway into another place. Yo, this feels like freaking Narnia. This is amazing. Narnia. It does. It's so amazing. Good old tire stuck there. Yeah, it's probably from the flooding. Well, as you can see, we've deployed three uh, have a heart crawfish traps. <laughs> and uh, I tried fishing over here too, but nothing doing. And I found this shell. Man, it would be, I would, I don't care. It's not that cold in the water. I would go for a swim if there were some big, uh, big clam shells, big clams in there or freshwater clams. Keep our eyes out for that. Maybe on the next sunny day or something, we'll be able to see to the bottom, be able to see something like that. I think it's time to go look for other game and other things. Onward and upward. We got another trap to set here and it's got the dog food in it. And I was just thinking to myself, I wonder if the amount of dog food equals the amount of calories. If we were just to eat the dog food, not that I'd like to, would equal what we've caught so far in crawfish. We bought like a $7 bag at the beginning um, before we headed out uh, on, on day one. And uh, it's still quite a bit left. So I, I'd have to say per price, $7, we've eaten at least you know $400 worth of crawfish if you were to buy them at a restaurant, I bet. So it's definitely paid for itself in the quality of meals and the quantity of crawfish that is so much more tasty than dog food, that's for sure. <laughs> Alright, so heading back. Probably go for a walkabout at dusk here, see if I can't get a turkey, rabbit, things like that. And then maybe come back down with a power bait and bait up some lines and see if we can't catch a catfish. And keep trying, keep trying. It's a consistent, persistent effort. It doesn't happen all overnight. Unless you leave a line out and you get catch a fish overnight, but you know what I mean. It takes a lot of work. So we're all about it. We're on top of every angle. Chris is baiting up the raccoon traps. I call them raccoon traps, but they that's pretty much all he's ever caught with them. So pretty much raccoon traps. I'm hoping he doesn't catch one. But if I do see one tonight, I kind of got to shoot it because we need food. Even if it means we're surviving off... 50% raccoon, this whole adventure. <laughs> Yeehaw. Oh shoot, put the handle in the fire. Ooh, boiling. Is that hot? Quite there we go. Little raccoon stew broth. Yummy. Lots of raccoon. I think I'm gonna throw some of the pan with this fat and try to fry it up a little bit to make it a little less like stew. It's all burnt stew and more like crisped up bits of uh Oh, I don't know what you call it, like meat hash, hash succotash or something like that. Isn't that what they used to call it? Yeah, 
This thing's pretty legit though. Yeah, that's a good amount. I mean, and I had a big cup of broth out of there, so. On a bit of adobo. Oh yeah. Maybe the fanciest raccoon there ever was. All right, it's done. You ready? Oh, always ready. Heck yeah. Man, that almost looks like uh, like shredded pork or something. I know. To me, it looks like corned beef and hash or something. Like that, like my grandma used to make that I didn't like for some reason back then. But then I had it again recently, and I was like, oh, I should like die for that. It's all all the fats kind of fried out of it into to kind of the way it like well not fried out of it but fried into grizzling up the. Ooh yeah. Yeah. That looks awesome. Dinner time. Here's your spork. In living color, this is what it looks like. All fried up, so all the little bits of fat, we kind of like basically fried the meat in until it's all dissolved, so it's like, it's not all these chunks of fat in there anymore. Now the meat's fried up. I think that makes it a lot more tasty. Let's find out. Mmm. Mm. Oh man! Right? That is so legit. Yeah. But that adobo, it's got some like... It tastes like corned beef. It's still very, very rich. No, it reminds me of brisket that I put in those tacos. Mmm! Oh, this would go so good in some tacos. If you fried this up and didn't tell someone it was brisket, they'd never know. No. Nope. Heck, you could open a taco stand, go out and use those traps, get yourself some raccoons. Raccoon tacos. And uh, you call it raccoon taco and like as if it's a joke, you know, but like, no, and everybody's like, ha ha ha, because it's a like, raccoon on the side holding a taco or something. But in reality, you're trapping raccoons at night, skinning them and, and doing this to them. What you do is you give them options for brisket, chicken, and raccoon. So you can, you know. People will pick the raccoon, I bet. Yeah. You don't make it the only option, but you allow them the opportunity to pick it if they want. Some, oh, that was another thing that would be good. Mix some barbecue sauce with this. And then. Oh, yeah. That, some shredded cheese. Uh, put it on a bun with some coleslaw on top. Have it like a pulled pork sandwich. I know it sounds messed up. Oh, and Critter Sauce. This company in Maine makes this stuff called Critter Sauce that they cater with. It's a secret recipe. It's so good. Some people would scoff at it, but I've done it a few times with, like, shredded stuff. Like, shredded pork, for real. Mm hmm You take uh, apples, and you cut it up, and off to the side, you, t you sprinkle a smidge of sugar for the caramelization part. Mm hmm But then you take, work with me, just a little bit. I don't over like it overwhelmed, but a little bit of chili powder. Mm. I'm not kidding. It is really good. Mm. Then you mix it in the meat because it balances and keeps keeps it from getting. Oh, so I do. Yeah, I yeah. Oh, I love that because my favorite sandwich in the world is called the Orchard at the Hope General Store, and it's turkey, brie, apple, and uh, caramelized onions. On brie a is such a good cheese. Yeah, and my my favorite sandwich I've ever made. There's raisin bread, curry, apple, and cheddar cheese toasted. Oh, man. It's so good. I, yeah. I wonder that we might have overdosed on fat. You think? And had a hypo... It kind of caused like a hypoglycemic like reaction of some sort. Or from a, an insulin spike. I don't know. I don't know what else it could be. Because why I could have been partially like feeling a little bit cruddy... And nauseous, and you actually throwing up. I mean, as silly as it sounds, so my utensil, right? I found those on the ground. I rinsed them off, but they were still on the ground. There could have been a slight minor contaminant in there. Yeah, but I was, I was, I was legitimately. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm running through scenarios. Yeah. It could have been a small little bug that hung on 
on something from the water possibly in a stew, maybe. It could have been a slight piece of undercooked meat that got lucky because when even though it might have been stirred up a little bit, it just didn't There's get hot. There's no way. That pot was um, on the coals for like 20 minutes, 30, an hour and a half cooking. I don't, I understand, but I'm just saying... There's some are... Slight things don't make you sick, though. But the thing is, is we've been processing and butchering animals on the table that we've been eating on, and there's nothing in this world that would clear that for to make that food safer, restaurant safer, FDA approved. Yeah, but it's we don't dirty eat off table. the table. I've had some of my stuff on there before, though. <clears throat> all, all I has to do is my utensil be too close or maybe there was a contaminant we didn't see and my utensil touches it it could be anything i'm not i'm not saying those are definites i'm just saying it could be any we're out in the wild and we're not being nearly as germophobic as a lot of other people would be so the risks are obviously like notoriously going to be just a smidge higher natively i mean your immune system is pretty tough Uh, maybe my immune system just tougher than yours and it was we both got the same dose because like you know i spent 87 days where I would just lick my chopsticks clean and stick them in the wall and all I ever did is add stuff to my pan and boil it yeah. just like I had done out here and eat it. Mm-hmm. And just boil, eat, boil, eat. You know, and like it's the same thing before alone. I was sick all the time. Eating butter made me sick. Eating steak with fat, grizzled fat on it, which I loved, made me sick. And as soon as I went out there, I spent 12 days cleansing and then I was able to digest fat and that's why I think, like, I didn't get so sick, whereas you got sick the other day. I, I was able to cycle that through my system, and, uh... Yeah, and we weren't very being very keto right before. Because even if you've been keto, and you've been doing all this keto stuff, you haven't actually done a full-on clean, like, a full-on cleansing. It wouldn't be bad to look up that cleansing stuff and do the cleanse, where you, you know, basically, it's like an intermittent fast, but you also, at some point, you drink a cup of olive oil or half a cup of olive oil and and you something melts and it like basically opens up your colon and you just like just like water and flush out and it flushes all these gallstones out so that your body can digest fat and you have so much energy after that there's no enema involved so that that's a good part kind of cool having a compass on your watch I suppose well I was going to go out hunting and I may still do that but I might just do it at like 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning I'm pretty tired it's been a long day (sighs) the idea of just sitting out there being kind of cold a little bit because it's actually really cold here again and uh, I'm, my feet were a little damp from trudging around the river so much, trying all kinds of different stuff out. Uh, kind of just want to get some rest and uh, have a go at it again tomorrow. That stew with the raccoon was actually quite filling, so I'm like kind of full and sleepy. So I'm going to get a little sleep. If I get up at uh, like 2 in the morning, that's like 6 hours of sleep, so... If I go to bed now, I could uh, get up real early and meet the hogs. And they're also, you know, where I'd be hunting them close enough if I start hearing them. I could wake up and try to sneak out there and get in a good position for a shot. I really want something more than a raccoon, so I'm super motivated. But uh, I'm super tired, so... (sighs) I take care of some of the sleeping first. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Fowler out.